Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in once again to the Manny Hall Show. Man, listen, this is number 81, I think. Okay. So we are almost at 100. And I got with me my homie Robin. She's going to be able to share her journey and every yes. cool thing that she's doing around the city of Cleveland. Hair, friendships, relationships, yes. everything. So get ready, tune in. Manny Hall Show. Oh, it's a vibe. And that's a vibe. Yeah, that's a vibe. She want a vibe. That's a vibe, yeah. Hey, how are you? I am great. How are you? I am doing terrific. I always say amazing. Yes. I'm terrific. <laughs> <laughs> How's your day going? Great. It's an off day, so any day that I'm off and I can do some yeah. of the things that I like to do is a good day. Gotcha. It's not wrong with that. All right, tell me about yourself. What you do? I am Robin Nicole. For those of you who don't know me, um, I am a hairstylist. Um, I specialize in healthy hair and hair coloring. I am a colorist at heart. That's gotcha. what I love to do. You love color. Um, I love color. It's what people have come to know me by healthy hair and hair color. Gotcha. Um, I don't do too many, I don't really do weaves at all. No sew-ins. Um, not too many quick weaves or different things like that. I'll add a track here or there, but my passion is healthy hair gotcha. and coloring. All right, now speaking of that, just I guess for some of the guys that don't know, like can you color weave? You can color weave. Okay. You can color weave. And I've had people reach out to me to color weave. So I will color weave. I will but color the weave got to be in their hair. No. No? I would prefer not. Hmm. You know, to have yeah. the weave in the hair because it's how easier. how would you do that? Um, it's like regular hair, but not on the head, and you know, you just lay it out and you color it. Um, and it it works better for me that way. That way, um, I'm not working against a sewing or having to be so careful. Not that I'll be rough with the hair, but it just um, makes my work easier. Gotcha. That makes sense. So, how long have you been doing this? Ooh, well, I actually started doing hair in high school. Um, my mom let me do hair in my bedroom. Mm. Like the baby dolls or no, your friends? She, yeah, she let me bring the friends home. Okay, okay, okay. Here in high school. And in 11th grade, I got into the cosmetology program. And then two weeks later, I quit. I told her, take me out. I want to go back to college prep. Oh, wow. So, um, finished out high school in the college prep program. And then went to college. Um, when I got to college, I really didn't want to go. Um, and I told my parents, I don't want to go. I'm going to drop out and get a job. Well, my parents were not having that. Um, um, okay. My parents are professionals. Um, and it was ingrained in me that I was going to go to school. So we kind of went back and forth in, in everything. They're like, no, you're going to stay in there. Which was <laughs> the best thing that I could have ever done. Is, okay. is those times that you are glad that you listen to your parents' guidance and everything like that. Because the road that I wanted to go down, who knows where I would be right now. Just yeah, yeah, for straight. sure. Straight. Now, you're not the only one that's probably experienced that. So, right. why didn't you want to go to school? I just felt like it wasn't for me. And it's just a little bit lazy. I wanted to do... What I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, trying to be grown and being lazy at the same time. Gotcha. Um, I ended up transferring schools because I started off at Kent and then I transferred to Cleveland State. But after I finished my first year in Cleveland um, at Kent, before I transferred to Cleveland State, I begged my parents. The deal was, I'll finish this year out if you let me go to nail school for the summer. So I went to nail school for the summer um, in 2004, I believe. And then I started doing nails. Um at my friend's shop here first. So I did nails, finished school, ended up going back to school to get my master's degree. So for about, I'd say, four or five years, I was in the social work field. Oh, wow. Right. And then... So were you doing hair on the weekends? Nope. I did, I did nails up until I graduated um, with my bachelor's. And then I even abandoned that. So what happened? So why did night. you leave the hair line and start doing the nails? It was something quick that I could do because cosmetology school to go for hair was longer to go for oh, hair. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So I was like, okay, just let me do something. Okay. In 10 weeks, I can have it. I'll never. Two weeks? 10. 10 oh, weeks. It's okay. a 10-week course. How, and how long is cosmetology? Ooh, um, 
if you go straight through with no breaks, about 10 months. Wow. And I didn't have 10 months. Yeah. I was in school. It was not going to happen. And so were you living with your parents during this time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So why are you so thirsty? You just wanted to kind of get yeah, out there. Just something that I wanted to do. I um, wanted to be in the beauty industry, and I'm like, by any means necessary. Gotcha. If I can do this, maybe I can, you know, work my way and still kind of fulfill that passion. Well, it didn't do it for me. Um, I did it, and that's why it was so easy for me to abandon it because at heart, I really wanted to do hair. Mm. But um, for years, I just could not see how it was possible. I yeah. was in school. I went back to get the master's. I'm working and all of that. Um, I was with my high school sweetheart. We ended up getting married. So I really didn't see how it was possible because gotcha. now we have this household. We have these bills. Gotcha. I'm working. Um, but the goal was always to go back whenever I could at some point. And I would just always go on Paul Mitchell's website and see when a program was starting. Gotcha. See how long it was. Right. Um, and then you get discouraged because I'm like, you work full time. Where's the money going to come from? And does Paul Mitchell cost a lot compared to some other ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you probably can get for $10,000 at Interstate, maybe ten. you are going to pay like $20,000 at, Paul, at Paul, Mitchell. Paul Mitchell for it. But everybody to come out is pretty good, though. Because yeah, exactly. you can always use that with your clients. Like, I went to Paul Mitchell. Yes, I can say I'm a Paul Mitchell stylist. I'm a Paul Mitchell train stylist. I'm a Paul Mitchell colorist. Now, I'm going to be honest, Robin. Traditionally, I thought that Paul Mitchell was for, like, white girls. We all did until... Um, and I would say my first introduction was with my stylist, um, who I now work alongside, um, started using Paul Mitchell line unheard of mm. never thought you know that to use that isn't that crazy I, why why do we think that though i have no idea the products are great i swear by them and that is all i am a paul mitchell gotcha you know i gotcha. rep it I, that's what i use so you don't use it just for me hmm? oh no 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 and, remember, and you know remember I, that remember <laughs> that back in the day right right and i try to tell you know explain to my clients um as for me I use Parmesan products, I use professional products, and I spend money on my products. So mm -hmm. sometimes you kind of get the back and forth. Well, I found this in the store, I found this at Sally's, or you know, I'm all about what is the best of quality for my clients. So sometimes you just have to, you know, you're not using that dollar store oil, you no, know, you're not using that. Mm -hmm. This is what we're doing, you know. Right, right. So um, I stand firm in what I use in my business. But um, Paul Mitchell, I always had my eye on that once I decided that I wanted to go to school. And the plan was I would continue to work in the field. My aunt was a social worker and she was um, near retirement. When she retired, she was going to take some of her retirement and we were going to open a shop. She was going to manage. I was going to work. And we were going to make a way for me to go to school. And that was the plan. We talked about it. We all started putting things in motion. And she passed away at work. She had a massive heart attack oh, on her wow. job two years away from her retirement. Wow. And her retirement was set. All she literally had to do was retire it and walk into it. Mm. Everything was set up. Um, wow, what kind of impact did that have ooh, on you? She was like a second mom to me. Gotcha. Um, that was my everything. We were so close. Um, even in the career path that I chose. She was yeah. a social worker. I wanted to be a social worker. So that, and I mean, it was sudden. It was like here today, gone tomorrow. So that had a tremendous impact. I quit my job. Mm -hmm. I um, That happened in October of 2013. By February 2014, I had figured out how I was going to go to Paul Mitchell full time, and I quit my job. Wow. Because, um, you know, I watched her work all her life um, and do everything by the book down to the T. She saved her money. Her credit was perfect. She had planned this retirement, and she didn't even get a chance to enjoy it. So I decided then I'm going to do exactly what it is that I want to do what makes me happy. I'm gotcha. going to get up every day and just live the life that I want to live. Yeah. So, um, I would say that's really when I started living. And since I made that decision, 
that big decision led to the life that I'm able to live now and so many big decisions after that. That is really when um, I would say my life kind of began and things started happening. But you really could have stopped after she passed away and said, like, this is it for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to work this job or give up or just... But what made you keep going? I felt like I owed that to her. I felt like I owed that to her and I felt like I owed that to myself. And I was just ready to live a life that I really wanted to live because for so long I felt like I had fit into um, other people's expectations. What was expected of Robin? What other people um, wanted for me? And at that time I was just like, no. Um, Because a lot of what I was doing wasn't making me necessarily happy. You go along to get along. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to disappoint people. Um, You don't want to hurt people. You don't want people to hurt you. So you just keep going. Right. So. Yeah, a lot of people go with the flow like that. Yeah, and I didn't want the grief of losing her to eat me up either. So it was just, it was go time. It, It was go time. All right, so you were, you decided to go to Paul Mitchell. Did you have to get a loan or like did you just pay cash? I had financial aid left over from my bachelor's. So it kind of, it was so crazy how it worked out because until you kind of, you know, knock on the door and see what's available yeah. to you, you don't you know. You don't know, right. That's I true. never would have known that. Um, and then my mom um, paid the rest of what financial aid didn't cover. Nice. Because she was in a position to do it. That was a blessing. Yes, a big blessing. And she wanted that for me. She saw how serious it was for me, how important it was for me. And she backed me 200%, her and my father, because mm-hmm. I was able to quit my full-time job because I started working for my father gotcha. and his business. So they just kind of wrapped around me and just pushed me, just let me do that. Now, when you were doing the Paul Mitchell in the beginning, is that paid or is it just like? Oh, no. Everything that you do there, you are, you know, paying for. Um, and every opportunity is, you know, is learning, is volunteering, is signing up for these programs. And what their models is always say yes. Say yes to everything. Mm. So, um at that point, I just kind of opened up and any opportunity that was set before me, I said yes. And that oh, wow. led me okay. to so many different opportunities just within the school. So did you take on that same mindset for the rest of your life? Yes. Um, because I, before, I would say no a lot. No, I can't. No, I don't have time. No, I'm not able to. Oh, no, I never thought about that. And now it's yes. Mm. Um and I have an amazing support system. They just push me. If I think I want to say no, oh, no, you, you're going to do that. Gotcha. You're going to do that. Gotcha. So where, where's the risk involved with always saying yes? <gasps> the risk involved in always saying yes is because while all of these wonderful things were happening um, with my new career and with Paul Mitchell, um, in the midst of that, I went through a divorce. Gotcha. That I never saw happening. Gotcha. Um, but in all things, um, I believe God makes no mistakes. So that kind that was one more thing that kind of led me to where I was supposed to be. But it was something to definitely have to stop and deal with because while one part of your life is just excelling through the roof this one part is literally dying and divorce is like a death yeah for sure um yeah and i've been through divorce yeah so i I really had to stop and deal with that and it was especially um hard because i had married my high school sweetheart that is all that i had ever known so from 15 to 30 it was us yeah and then i reached 30 and it was no us and it was this whole new life this new career Mm-hmm. All of these uncharted territories. Mm-hmm. So while it was exciting and it was new, and I really found out my strength, and I would say I think I've done pretty well. Yeah, it's some areas over here that were hard. I struggled, um, and it was kind of hard for a while. I get it, and I can only imagine how tough that would be. Yeah, for anybody, oh, you yeah. know, to go through that, and it's like you're trying to excel your career, but 
you also have to deal with the traumatic event of a divorce. Yes. And I would say, you know, as bad as divorce can be, um, it wasn't, in my experience, it wasn't ugly. Gotcha. Um, That's a blessing. I thank God for that. That part, we kind of just kind of came together Mm -hmm. and dissolved it. Mutual, you know, it was mutual um, at times. Yeah. And um, discreet. And we went ahead and we got it done. And to this day. I can say I have no animosity, and I'm always wishing him the best. That's good. Yeah. Did it take a while to get to that place, or is it just straight from the beginning? Y'all um, just had that. I think that from the beginning, a little confusion because no, you don't want the marriage to end, but you know, you know, it's the best thing. Or at a time where you might not, you might not know it's the best thing your, you know, your partner does, or mm-hmm. vice versa. Right. Um, and even in times of trying to maybe reconcile or kind of figure out, or did we make a mistake? Um, God always remained faithful and just kind of kept moving things forward. So you know, it was no um, drama. No back and forth, no, you know, none of those things. And yeah. I am grateful for that because divorce can get messy. And especially if other elements are added, mm-hmm. um, it can definitely get messy. So I, you know, thankful that neither one of us let it get to that level. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, what's the biggest thing that you've learned being an entrepreneur? Oh, so many things. The biggest thing. Um, that I chose to do this. This was my choice. So I always want to give my clients my best. I always want to give my business my best because it is a choice. Yeah. Um, I wake up every day and I am Robin Nicole. I embody my business. So yeah. if I'm not going, the business is not going. If I'm not well, you know, the business is going to suffer. So I always just push and try to be the best that I can be for my business. Everything else becomes secondary when you choose to do something, you know, like entrepreneurs choose. Yeah, because for every entrepreneur to get started, they all have their own particular journey that they have to go down. And it's never going to look the same. So it's like even in the hair industry, like you could have 10 different people all of them have a different journey and different story to tell. Yes. And um, the one thing as my career began and my, you know, journey as an entrepreneur began to unfold, my really my new personal life began to unfold and gotcha. I started having new experiences and mm. different things like that. So for me, it's been... It's been exciting, huh? Yeah, one exciting journey. At times, it's been scary, but... I wouldn't trade it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't trade it. What would you say is the most impressive thing about Robin Nicole? I don't know. I don't mm, impressive because I don't think about myself like that. I'm just I'm always um, grateful. Mm -hmm. Um, And God is amazing. I think that um, I get impressed. Or I would say the most impressive thing about me is just my ability to keep going. Um, I feel like I don't have time to be weary for how. And God has been so good to me. And he's brought me through so many things. Um, Things that I share, things that I don't share. um, And just things that I can recall. How, How could I, you know, how can I not keep going? So that's the one thing that impresses me because... You know, you are you, and you are on this journey. So, yep. you know your deepest secrets or how you feel sometimes and different things like that. So, I would say that's the one of the most impressive things. Um, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. I got you. Yeah. Uh, is there any books that you're currently reading or have read? I, um, when I have time. The Secret is one of my favorites. Yeah, I, read I heard some good and, things about that yeah, one. Yeah, I read and reread. And now, now, why did you like that one so much? Because it, it talks about the law of attraction. And if do you, you, study you per, it, Do you personally believe in that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, 
there are some skeptics of course i mean and this is always a big debate because yeah. it's this whole side of the room will believe in it and this whole side of the room will say it's not you right. know it's not true i don't believe it but it's it, it's really like spirituality yeah um what do you believe are are you a believer in christ or you know or whatever your belief system is All right. um that's what you allowed to be your guide yeah. um if i deal in negativity then that is what's going to surround me right. that's what i'm gonna attract but if i always keep an open mind keep positivity speak life then that's what i'm gonna attract and that's what i'm gonna see right because because you know and i think that it's, it's real mm-hmm. um because it kind of lines up with the word a lot yes definitely and for me i feel like now if you're somebody that's like all right well a million dollars is going to come right now to me. Right. And it might not if it's not God's will for your life. Right. But I feel like if you're asking according to his will, and then you line up your life with stuff that's supposed to be there, then yeah, you're definitely going to get it. But it's like, you can't say, as Robin Nicole, man, Lord, like, I just want to have 50 consistent clients every single week bringing in at least $1,000 a pop. Yeah, that's very possible. But if you don't have a place for them to go, if you don't have good service, if you treating them nasty, then it might not happen for you. Absolutely. You know, it's it, all yeah. those things. It's alignment. Yeah, for sure. If I say this is what I want, then I need to align my actions with this. Yep. I need to align my mindset with this. Yep. I need to act as if it's already done. And exactly. I need to make everything around mm-hmm. me kind of work going toward that goal. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah, because, I mean, like, even... It's, it's, I'm not sure where it's at, but I know Paul said, speak those things that's not as though they already are. Yes. And it's like, you really got to believe that stuff. I mean, like, when me and my wife sometimes would joke, like, she'll be sick. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, well, you know, how you feel? And she'd be like, oh, you know, I feel kind of sick. And I'd be like, well, you know, you can be here. She'd be like, yeah, I still feel kind of sick, though. And it's just like, it's a joke, but it's real. Like, you're believing for the healing, but your current state is where you are. Like, you can't lie about that. Right. Like, how you feel is how you feel. Right. But it's just like, you have to try to believe something different. Like, so for those people that are, like, struggling in their business and just life, period. Like, you can believe something different. You don't have to stay stuck. Yes. And that is really how... um Robin Nicole became to be. When I got out of Paul Mitchell, I probably had one true blue client. My sister cousin Mm -hmm. always came, always supported, even when I was in school. So I would say one consistent and my best friend. So maybe two. Gotcha. And, um, but I had to get out here and make it happen. I had quit that full time. And so this was the plan. And I was on commission. So, you know, I had to make it happen. So looking back on how I really got started. And then in the midst of that, the divorce. Mm -hmm. First the separation, then the divorce. I ended up moving back home. So when I look at, and that was only probably about three years ago. So when I look at three years ago, look back then, and I look to today amazing and it was you know part of that was my determination um the fact that i did speak life the fact that i did have people around me speaking life even when certain people you know were speaking death yeah. how are you gonna do this oh you can't do this oh we didn't know she can do hair oh this isn't gonna work yeah oh you know your prices are this um you hear it all even if people don't think you're hearing it right. you hear it all right. um and to decide to not fall down in that and what people were thinking or what people were saying or even what people were wishing and to continue to push forward and just keep positivity and I would I would not trade it if I had to do it again tomorrow I would mm-hmm. definitely that's a lesson yeah I mean it's definitely hard to keep going like um and I honestly would say I'm really proud of you for oh, your journey and to you. keep going because I'm proud of you Thank you. I appreciate that. And it's like, it's not easy to keep going for anybody. Even if you go into a job every day, it's hard to get up out the bed. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I, I, I shout people out for that, but especially you 
for keep going during those trials, during mm-hmm. that tribulation, and then still coming out successful on the other side. That's dope. Right. And I was laughing. Um, yesterday was Mother's Day, so, of course, I was with my family. And so we were just talking, and I was telling them about um, when I had um, a carpal tunnel flare-up mm. out of nowhere. I didn't even know I had carpal tunnel. Gotcha. But my, my arms uh, was swollen all the way down to my fingertips. Oh, wow. And in that moment, panic set. This is my dominant hand. This is what I used to work with. Gotcha. And I just remember like crying out to the Lord, like, you know, I sacrificed a whole life mm-hmm. for this. This is what I love to do because I didn't know what it was. And all I could think of, like, I'm not going to be able to work. I'm not going to be able to support myself. I'm going to have to go back and do something, you know. And I just cried out, bef- you know, before you kind of calm down and take yeah, action. Yeah. But uh-huh. I just remember in that moment, it became clear to me. I absolutely, um, without a doubt, love what I do. Um, I can't think of doing anything else. And it's bigger than me. Um, I look at my clientele and I look at my parents and I look at, you know, my mentor um, and even in the relationship that I'm in now, um, because now I am in a relationship with another entrepreneur. Nice. And just, you know, um, just what life is. I feel like I owe so many people because I, I stand on the shoulders of so many people. Like, my parents are excellent. I can't say I had any type of upbringing other than good and supportive. Um, they are still supportive to this day. Um, my mentor, she loves me and has employed me, fed me like she is a parent. Nice. So with that, like, you owe people. Mm-hmm. You got to keep going. That's what's up. I, I definitely believe that. Mm-hmm. So as we get out of here, do you have any final words? Um, first, I just want to thank you for even having me. Yeah, for um, sure, you don't. I appreciate that. And... um Dreams do come true. Never let anybody tell you otherwise. You can do exactly what you want to do. You can have the life that you want to have. It is designer's choice. You are the designer. So you make it fit um, anything that you've ever dreamed of. And I live by that. I feel like anything is possible. Anything I want is possible. How can I get in contact with you? I am on Instagram, um, Robin Nicole, all one word, R-O-B-Y-N-N-I-C-O-L-E-85. On Facebook, I am Robin Nicole, and my phone number is 216-316-0282. I always answer back, and I always um, keep in contact, so that's how everybody can reach me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Robin. Thank you. All right, y'all. Be blessed, Manny Hall Show. We out.